Hello and welcome to the first lecture of Structural Engineering 200, Introduction to Structural Mechanics. Um, in this video, I wanted to give an overview of the course, uh, tell a little bit about how we're going to uh, run and organize it, and then uh, provide you a, a little bit of an overview of where we've put materials on Canvas uh, to help you study. So. Uh, with that, uh, we'll jump into the lecture. Um, so the first thing that I want to uh, let you know is just uh, who will be teaching this course. So um, I'm teaching the first six weeks, so I'm Lucas Hogan. Uh, you can see my talking head above the uh, static picture of me. And then in the second uh, six weeks, uh, my colleague Dr. Quincy Ma will be teaching. So we will hold lectures on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, if we are holding lectures live, they will be in OGGB4. Um, so over in the business building, you can see the room number there. And then if we are, um, like we are today, uh, holding these lectures remotely, um, we will do a recording and I'll post them onto Canvas and I will have uh, the lectures become live uh, at our normal class time. Um, and really that's to try to help provide some level of consistency and structure to the course. So uh, just briefly I will show you where um, those lectures will be when we are uh, on the Canvas page. So you can see we've got the Canvas page here. This is our front page. Um, we've got some announcements, you know, our, our most, most recent three announcements that we've put out. Um, and then as you come down you can see we have this course links and weekly planner. And uh, this is where I'll be putting um, course videos, so either uh, those which we're recording remotely, or um, if we have a live record, or if we have a live lecture and we have a recording from there, I will also put it here. You will also be able to find those live lecture recordings over in the recordings tab. Um, and as you can see, you know I've already put a welcome video up there, and you see the type. And then we can click here and uh, it'll take us to a link to stream it. Um, and that's the welcome video there. Um, and that will be the case for, for really all of these. Uh, similarly too, you've, if you've got a slow internet connection and streaming is a struggle, uh, there'll be the ability to download these lectures as well. So that's where we're going to put the lecture material. Um, tutorials, so the course will have um, three lectures a week and then one tutorial. Uh, tutorial sections are broken out because it is a large class. We've got a number of different streams. Um, and you can see on your, uh, uh, if you go into Canvas, you'll see the section which you're enrolled in. You'll see like a T01 for tutorial one. Uh, I will send out an announcement uh, by the end of the day on Monday. Uh, March 1st uh, in terms of letting you know which tutorial goes to which room on which day. Um, now, because this week we are remote, we will not be uh, holding these tutorials uh, on campus, so instead we will do it on Zoom. Um, and again, there'll be a, a similar aspect for uh, on these Zoom tutorials. Uh, when they're online, it's a uh, we're, we're a little bit more relaxed in terms of uh, who shows up where, uh, but when we do have, when we are meeting physically, uh, we ask that you try to go to the, the room which you are assigned. Uh, the reason that is, is because, um, you know, if everyone shows up to these tutorials and we all try to go into, say, room 402-231, we just simply won't fit. Um, and so timetabling has uh, sort of split out uh, the course uh, enrollment so that you know, everyone can fit into these rooms comfortably and safely. Um, the sort of third physical meeting that we're doing will be these uh, labs in the MDLS, so the multidisciplinary learning spaces. Um, and they've got to have one uh, just before the uh, semester break on March 31st uh, and April 1st. So there will be uh, four sections there, each one hour a piece. And again, you've, uh, you'll see on Canvas, you'll be uh, already assigned to a lab section, uh, and then you'll just go to that accordingly. And again, as we get closer to the day, I will send out an announcement so that you know where to go and when. So that first lab we will um, have then, and then the second lab we will have 
on the 17th to the 20th of March. So there's one lab meets uh, on each of those days. That's a Monday through a Thursday. And again, they will be in that same lab section. Um, so in terms of, so both for the tutorials and for the labs, uh, they're going to be supported by our wonderful um, graduate teaching assistants, uh, who you can see over here on the right. Um, so we have Amen, Pengtai, Winston, Sunil, Mo, and Rosa, and uh, they will help answer your questions through this, and uh, they're, they're all quite uh, capable. Many of them have uh, been TAs for this before, and so I uh, look forward to uh, being able to use them as yet another resource on top of Quincy and I. Uh, a bit more administrative work. So for um, I'm going to be holding office hours for the first six weeks, uh, Monday and Wednesday, which will be noon to 1, and Friday 10 to 11. And they'll be held in my office in the engineering tower, uh, which is on the 10th floor, uh, room 04. Uh, so if you go up the uh, elevators, that will be over on the Simon Street side. Um, if I find that these office hours are really popular and we can't all fit in my office, I will arrange to find a room which has a larger space at that same time. So I've set those office hours such that they shouldn't conflict with any other courses you have uh, if you're only taking year two, but if for some reason uh, you do have a conflict there or if uh, you can't make it or you simply just need more time, just please email me uh, and we can set up a time uh, to meet uh, outside of those office hours. Um, I'm always happy to meet students in person. I find that's the, uh, the best way to, to teach if I can teach sort of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and it's far my preference over Piazza. So as you can see, Piazza down there is primarily going to be maintained this semester by the TA staff. Um, what we're going to do is have uh, the a tutor for your tutorial stream will answer your Piazza questions. Um, if they go unanswered for uh, a long period of time, myself or Quincy will step in to try to, uh, you know, give an answer. But one of the challenges with a course this big with this many students is that if it were up to Quincy or I to answer all of these questions, uh, we wouldn't be able to get anything else done. Uh, one of the other challenges that I have seen in the past with Piazza is that it's not really a replacement for lectures, um, and it's also not a replacement for, for office hours, in my opinion. Uh, one of the nice things on, you know, if we do office hours either in person or via Zoom, is that uh, you'll find that I'll ask probing questions. I will have and sort of try to, you know, if you're coming and asking a question, I'll try to stretch your understanding and just feed you little bits and pieces of information so that you can come to... Uh, the conclusion on your own. While with Piazza, if I'm going to do that, that takes a long time to sort of draft these questions up. And the alternative is that I just give you the answer, which is not what we're here to do. We're not here just to, you know, feed answers out as sort of, you know, rote learning. Um, what we want, we want to try to give you some uh, analytical skills so that uh, you can take the content of this course and then apply it uh, to, you uh, situations which you've never seen before. Um, and the other, the sort of the last thing I will say on Piazza is that we're really encouraging you to answer each other's questions. And so um, that that's a, a, a wonderful way to learn if you have to teach someone else or, and so what we can do, you can answer uh, those questions like it's a forum. And then Quincy and I, or one of the TAs can come in essentially as a uh, administrator and we can click the uh, the good question or, or good answer button uh, to sort of uh, give it the stamp of approval or pop in with a, a quick comment if we feel that uh, the answer needs a little bit of uh, um, uh, changing. So that's sort of the um, you know the what we're doing and, and how course is structured. Um, in terms of assessments, uh, the first one we have coming up is actually going to be the uh, basic skills test, which is on uh, Friday, March 12th. Um, that's going to be a Canvas quiz. It's going to be online. Uh, it's 40 minutes with a series of questions. And really what this um, test is, is to, to enable you, uh, you to, you know, find out where you are with the prerequisite material because uh, we will be building upon what you've learned in previous courses 
uh, for this course. Uh, the next one coming up is going to be sort of the next large uh, thing that's coming up is going to be the midterm test. Uh, that is in the middle of May. That's going to be a closed book test on uh, Wednesday evening, um, hopefully on campus. If it's not on campus, we will switch and we will do a closed book, um, essentially Canvas assessment. Uh, the project will come in two parts. We'll have more information on that as the course progresses, but this will essentially be a design project um, of a simple structure, uh, and it's uh, to help use some of the uh, analytical tools which we're teaching you in this course into a design setting, something which is uh, small and well-scoped, but uh, will hopefully let you pull in uh, many of these different concepts into uh, sort of a, a hole and then we'll give you an opportunity to see that ah, I see where concept A, B, and C actually get used together um, in, in a real practical setting. Um, coming on from that in terms of sort of practical understanding and things which we hope will help augment your learning with this course are the two MDLS labs. So the first one, as I said, will be just before the Easter break. Um, this will be a looking at uh, so some hands-on activities which are going to be looking at load paths and stability, uh, hopefully, and, and that will be in three dimensions and will uh, sort of help get you some more, uh, you know, intuition around how structures behave and, and where these loads are going to go. And uh, that's going to be a lot of building things and, and pushing and moving on them. Um, and then we also have a, a small subset uh, activity there which will be around um, drawing bending moment diagrams from deflected shapes and again we're going to have some small structures so you can push on those uh, and hopefully with this physical activity gain some intuition from just uh, sort of this analytical tool which we've taught you um, from you know in your statics course as well as what we're, we're sort of expanding out in this course. Uh, lab two, uh, which will be held in May, is the Build a Better Beam Challenge. Uh, this is a really exciting lab. Uh, we've done this before uh, when we used to run Structures Day, when we used to, before we had the MDLS uh, spaces and, you know, we, we didn't have any, undergradu any undergraduate labs in the structure stream. Uh, we used to try to do it all in one day, sort of like Structures Day Camp, where everyone moved around to different uh, locations and to different activities. This was always one of the most popular one. We're essentially going to get you to um, build a beam and smash it up. And it's the, uh, the most efficient, so the one which can take the most load, which is the lightest uh, wins. And uh, we'll see how we go. We might have some, uh, some small prizes, some cookies or, or something uh, which you can get uh, on top of your bragging rights. Um, the other thing which will be coming up uh, and you'll see regularly through this course is we're going to have homeworks. So with these homeworks, uh, they're essentially just a submission only. They're marked for completion um, rather than uh, providing a sort of step-by-step, -step, um, you know, we're, we're not going to have, you know, mark each and every uh, one of these for uh, did you get this line correct or that line correct simply because there's just too many um, of you. However, uh, we are doing these regularly. We are trying to make these homeworks a moderate challenge um, so that one, um, you can sort of keep up with the material and then you're using it essentially as a, uh, a study guide for your midterms and your exams. And it's a good way for you to uh, determine, you know, how do you feel about the material um, get you working on it, get you asking questions to the tutors, to myself, to Quincy. So we'll look at the, uh, the first homework, which we have here. Um, and you can see, so we'll go back to the front page of Canvas. Um, so below the sort of weekly planner where I'm putting the, uh, materials, I'll also put the homework, I'll put the links. And you can see just below that, we have a, uh, sort of essentially an overview of what we're planning to do for the whole course. Now, uh, while we will do our best to try to keep to the sort of uh, the lectures we're doing on the day, this might get shifted and moved uh, depending upon how, um, how we progress through and if we feel that we need more time on a, on a subject or not. But as you can see, uh, we've got a, a number of homeworks and we've got them kind of 
uh, spaced out through the uh, through the semester. Um, and so the first one is due on Monday, and this is what the homework looks like. So if we look at the link here, uh, we have uh, really two um, shear and bending moment diagrams. So this will force you to do some, um, some basic statics, uh, refresh all of these uh, sort of concepts from your first year. Um, and we'll, we've got some slightly more complicated structures, but you'll see that the, uh, the approach that we take to uh, simple structures is the same as when we're doing frames. And then we have this third question in which uh, will we'll require you to do a little bit of uh, online research um, of, you know, find a, a notable structural failure we don't care which, and it's from history, so this could be from, you know, Roman times or before, or it could be from last year or, or this year. Uh, it's up to you, but find it, and then write a short paragraph of what the, you know, what the failure was, um, what caused it, and uh, sort of what did you learn out of this. Uh, and it's really to start getting you to, to do a little bit of self-study, a little bit of self-exploration, get you curious about this topic. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is see, well, what were the mistakes which have happened before? So um, if we just go back to our front page, so that's the homework there. As I said, with the uh, course planner, uh, we have everything sort of laid out, and so you can use this to try to uh, organize your time, uh, particularly as the semester goes on. You'll see in both this course and in other courses, you'll get a lot of work due around the same time, and you'll get very busy. And so um, if you know what's coming, you should hopefully be able to manage your time uh, and try to get ahead of things when you can. Um, so, like I said, the first thing that's going to come up, which is sort of uh, on the uh, larger assessment side, is the basic skills test. That's worth 5%. Um, and then uh, you'll see we've got the two, uh, the first MDLS activity, the, the four streams here, uh, just before break. And then just after the break is coming in, we have uh, part A of the project will be due. Um, and then you'll see this week. 10 is going to be a very busy week for this course. And while, um, while I wish we didn't have so much stuff packed together, you do know well ahead of time um, the Project B will be due, but you see you've got nearly a month um, between when Project A and Project B will be done, and you will have um, all of the material that you need to finish it uh, by sort of uh, week 8. So hopefully you can get ahead of that and this deadline shouldn't be uh, too onerous. Uh, then we have our very fun Build a Better Beam challenge. Uh, and then here's the big one is the midterm test. So just know that you'll have that to study for. And you will have a, a sheer homework coming in right there. So like I said, week 10 is, uh, is a, bit of a, a bit of a full one. Uh, so sort of apologize for that in advance, but just want to give you fair warning. And then you can see uh, as we, we go through the rest of the course. So, um, coming back to our PowerPoint. So as I said, that was our assessments. Here's a, here's a brief breakdown of what the, um, the different weightings are for them. Um, and then uh, at the end of the course, we have our final exam. That's going to be a three-hour exam. It's worth 50%. Um, you have to get over 50% in order on that exam in order to pass the course. Now, uh, the university has made a decision given that we are coming into and out of lockdowns and there's a possibility that we might, that we're just going to uh, plan ahead and that um, all exams for this first semester will be online regardless if we are uh, meeting in person or not. So uh, just know we will have an online exam that will be delivered via Canvas and uh, you'll have three hours to get it done. All right, so uh, just a little bit more about some resources which you have or the, for the course. Um, and so supplementary textbooks. So the first one that I have there is your course notes. So you will have seen the announcement that I sent out 
uh, about. Um, we have them online on the Canvas page, and there's a link to that, um, as well as if you would like a physical copy, you can get that from the, uh, from the bookstore at Ubik. Now, uh, why do I have these course notes as a supplementary textbook? Well, this is really from my own uh, lecturing style. I will do some PowerPoints, uh, like I'm doing now, and there's some topics which, you know, you'll find when we, like, for example, when we do the structural forms or the reading drawings, um, it just makes more sense to do them as a PowerPoint, and I will try to get those out to you um, either just before class so you can print them off and take notes on them or, or right after so that you have them. But uh, what I try not to do is I try not to just go through the course notes on a document camera. My feeling is that uh, those are there really as an extra resource for you to read. Um, I try to not do the same uh, examples which are in the course notes just so that you have more examples to look at. And uh, my approach is really to try to do things with uh, writing with a pencil uh, or a pen and paper on uh, with a document camera. Um, and so I, I, that was how I was taught. It's how I find I learn best. And also it uh, hopefully slows down the pace of how fast I can go uh, so that that helps you take notes and, and sort of keep up with the material and, and can synthesize um, a bit during lecture instead of uh, or racing through and, and stuff to sort of uh, falling through the cracks. Um, two other textbooks which uh, I recommend are Mechanics and Materials by Beard Johnston and DeWolf. So this is a picture of the 8th edition. Uh, I have the 4th edition on my shelf. They're much the same. Um, and then there's also uh, Structural and Stress Analysis by Megson. Uh, you can find both of these textbooks in the library. If you want to purchase them, I, I know that uh, here at, at this university, um, many folks don't purchase textbooks. I know in the U.S., uh, we always did. Like I said, I still have this. I find it a really great reference material. And um, so why are those good uh, resources? One, they've got more practice problems, more example problems if you want to look at for studying. And two, there's some times where things are just worded slightly differently and they make more sense to, you know, one person over another. So we will have how I will explain it in, in lecture. Uh, there's how it's written down in the course notes. But Beer Johnson and DeWolf and Megson have written them slightly differently for the same topic. And so you might find that that's just more helpful to explain these things. So that's, that's with the textbooks which we have. And now here comes to, you know, I want to kind of end uh, this introduction with a little bit of what are our expectations for you and for this course. Um, so this is one of your first courses in uh, year two civil. So uh, while we have, uh, some of you will be in the civil degree, some of you will have chosen the structures uh, degree. We're, we're all taking the same course and we all have the same common second year. And this is from experience that we have from students from, uh, you know, from previous years is they find that the shift to year two is a really, really big change from uh, their first year. Um, and that there, the amount of work is a lot more, the pace is a lot faster. And so as such, we expect you're going to have to do a lot more self-directed learning, a lot more studying um, in order to stay on top of the material. We will do our best to provide resources uh, to help you, but there is uh, a lot of this is going to be on you um, uh, in order for you to succeed at this degree. And you will find that, you know, these skills and, and that exp that you will develop in order to, to meet those expectations and those expectations uh, will be the same throughout the rest of your undergraduate career. And to be honest, once you go out and work into practice. So... Uh, some, some, you know, general expectations is uh, I expect you to come to class. Um, I realize sometimes if you're sick, please stay home. Um, if you have anything, you know, if you've got a, an emergency that you have to deal with, fine. This is why we record these lectures. But uh, coming to class, actually being in that physical space helps a lot in the learning. Um, and so when you're there, uh, take notes, right? And so this is one of the reasons why um, I do document camera stuff is that, you know, uh, it, it allows you to take notes at, 
is about the same pace that I'm lecturing. And there's been a lot of pedagogical work which has shown that actually taking handwritten notes is one of the best ways to learn and sort of cement uh, the lessons which you're being taught. Um, to simply sit passively uh, and sort of watch or listen to a, um, a, a lecture, uh, you've got a retention of about 10%. If you read your, uh, that material, uh, to people are typically between 20 to 30 percent. If you're taking notes, um, you're probably 30 to 40 percent of, of retention of what you learn. And then if you do you know, practice problems, you're probably about 70 percent. So again, a lot of this is the more that you do um, and the more sort of repetition you have, uh, the better you'll do in the course, the better, the more that you will take. Uh, what we're teaching you and be able to apply it not only in this course but in all these subsequent courses uh, which build upon this material. Um, the other sort of attendance thing is you know please come to tutorials. Um, they're there to help you. They're there. Uh, these tutors um, really want to help. They're there as a resource um, and so that means that you know if you come to tutorials please come um, you know having done some of the work. Uh, and that helps you for this sort of third bit on attendance is to ask questions. So if we are in a live lecture, I love it when someone puts a hand up and says, I, excuse me, uh, I don't understand that. Or what about this? Um, you know, it, it helps you be engaged. Don't feel embarrassed about it. If you have a question, chances are probably about 80% of the class has that same question. So. Um, the more active you can be in your learning, the more you'll get out of it. And if you feel really uncomfortable asking those questions in a big class, that's where tutorials are great. They are there for questions. And if you've done your homework or, or made an attempt at some of your worksheet problems, that means that your questions aren't, you're not spending that time just doing that work. Uh, you have that time to ask questions, really dig into the things that you don't understand uh, and have um, the, the tutors uh, or myself uh, be able to provide you with some, uh, some guidance there. So uh, the next thing we have is we really do expect you to have an understanding of the materials you've learned which are prerequisites for this class. So that includes uh, the statics and uh, some calculus. So um, and we expect this so much that we have this basic skills test. So um, as you said, basic skills test is on March. The reason that we have this is because we do have a lot of material to get through in this course. And if you're shaky on these prerequisites, it means it's very difficult uh, to learn that material. However, if you do have a good understanding of this prerequisite material, scaffolding on top of that is actually quite easy and it actually means that uh, it's a really elegant way to understand these new concepts and just expand them out slightly from what you already know and then means that we can think about things instead of these big ugly equations and trying to remember rules and stuff, we can think of them in terms of statics and free body diagrams and equilibrium and all stuff that we're comfortable with and as a structural engineer is, is what we live and breathe. And so, um, as I said, we have those basic skills. Your homework you'll find is essentially just a slight extension of what you already know from your statics class. Uh, I'll give some worksheet materials for your tutorials, which will again help you study for this basic skills test. And then um, we have, you can see here on the course links, um, we have some, some self-check quizzes. So I recommend very strongly um, that you come through and you take these self-check quizzes to find out, you know, where, where are you at? Uh, you know, what, it's been a, a year since you've done static, so we expect you to be a little bit rusty. Um, but this is a good way to find out, well, how rusty are you? So, for example, uh, we'll click on this quiz. And what you can see is um, that, you know, this is on, on sort of definitions that we have. So if we preview... Um, you can go through and you can take these questions uh, again and again and again, and uh, it will slowly, and so you can see we've got them on definitions, force systems, moments, couples, resultants, etc., etc. Um, 
And with all of that, uh, you can get yourself a, um, uh, a good feeling of, you know, how do you, you know, what, what concepts do you need to refresh on? What concepts do you feel comfortable with? Those that you feel you need to refresh with, um, I've got a link to the uh, Engine 121 course book, so that'll have all of your statics, as well as I've got lectures from uh, Dr. Max Stevens' um, summer school uh, course, uh, which was 121, which is just run. So I've got some of them I've got broken into uh, the actual concepts and, and some of the others. Uh, I apologize, they're just there as uh, just the, the lectures. If I have time, uh, I will go through and I will continue to sort of break these up until they're sort of their nicer chunks. And then we've got some examples, some worked examples for you. This last one here I want to bring your attention to is um, actually not in one to one It is some calculus. So this course does use calculus primarily um, in the derivations of uh, some of these concepts. And so the reason that we, we want to make sure that you have a, a good understanding of this, and we're not going to, this is, you know, not super high level math. This is not a math course. But if you have a comfort with it and, and a base understanding, be able to do some simple integrals and some simple derivatives, um, then that's going to make actually the, the understanding of these new topics uh, that much more accessible. Um, and so what I have is I've provided a link to uh, Khan Academy, which is an online free learning source. Um, it has integration. There's some derivatives as well. Um, but this is where if you have, uh, uh, you know, you might not be as, uh, you haven't done calculus for some time, that's, that's a good place for you to go back and, uh, and learn. So, as for our prereq material, as I said, we have that basic skills course, uh, basic skills quiz coming up, and we're trying to provide you a lot of material so that uh, you you can work on that. So, final expectation is going to be on this, as we said, this self-directed learning, this outside study. Um, so, some of the, the biggest exp you know, is expectation is to do the homeworks and to do the tutorial works. Um, that is your practice, and it's that reinforcement, and the reason that we have these due um, within a, a week or two of when we present the material is so that it forces you to work on the material uh, while it's still fresh in your mind. Um, and just, again, sort of try to cement that in. So we're not throwing work just because uh, we, we like making you suffer. We're trying to do this for a purpose, and that purpose is to help you learn as best we can. Um, another thing which is really helpful for outside study is to read the notes before class. And so this is similar to try to do the work uh, before you go to a tutorial, reading the notes before class, and then take sort of handwritten notes and bring up um, some of your questions. You know, you know, think you won't understand everything, and that's okay, but uh, again, it sort of primes your brain and primes your brain with questions, and so as you then get the lecture, you go, ah, that's what that means. Um, and then sort of the final one is come to office hours if you have questions. Uh, as I've said already, um, office hours are one of my preferred ways to teach. It's uh, essentially a, a tutorial with just me. Um, and we can go uh, very, you know, it's the easiest way to help me uh, provide uh, feedback on directed questions and help you get through the parts which you don't understand. And um, yeah, that's, that's one, of my, um, one of my favorite things to do uh, and favorite ways to teach is these office hours. So I guess I'm going to um, uh, sort of leave you with um, some final little study tips. Um, and then this is going to be, I'll just have a, a quick list. So the first one is when you're studying turn off all the other devices. Try to, um, if you study in the library or in a nice quiet place uh, where you live, turn off the phone, turn off the laptop, don't go on social media because it's a distraction and, and it presses the dopamine button in your brain and your brain would rather be doing that fun thing than this, you know, work, which is studying. So that's the first one. Turn off your devices, turn off social media while you study. Also, when you study, Put a, uh, 
um, an extended period of time and just make that a structured period where that's all you're doing is you're going to study. And that might just be an hour. And if you do it for, you know, half hour or an hour, but it's, it's all you're doing and it's not, we're on the phone. We're not, um, you know, we're, we don't have the TV going on in the background. Uh, you'll find that's a really effective way. And so those shorter periods of time, uh, consistently is going to be some of your best, uh, way to do it. Uh, another one is try to, as I said, read your course notes um, or the supplemental material before you come to lecture. Go to the lecture, take handwritten notes, and then review those notes um, in the evening after uh, you, you've had that lecture. And again, it's that uh, multiple touches on, uh, on a material is what's going to help you um, get through this and, and really sort of uh, feel comfortable with this material. And then um, sort of the final one is, yeah, like I said, come to office hours, reach out if you've got any questions, um, and uh, we, we will do the best that we can to help get you through this. So with that, uh, I want to say again, welcome to the course. Um, that's our overview, and uh, looking forward to working with you all this semester.